Hey, what's going on guys? It's Joe from GadgetryTech.com and today we're going to talk about the Elgato Stream Deck XL. It is a 32 key programmable keypad for $249. They have a standard Stream Deck which is $149 and a Stream Deck Mini which is $99. The Mini comes with only 6 keys. The regular Stream Deck is um, 15 keys so naturally your capability goes up as the price increases. And with that being said, let's dive in and explain what makes this thing so awesome. First off, it's important to note that this is obviously called the Stream Deck XL for obvious reasons. The customizable keypad allows you to launch your own preferred streaming software, whether that be OBS, Streamlabs OBS, XSplit, Twitch Studio, etc. But then you can change scenes, enable or disable sources such as a webcam, microphone, party chat, whatever it may be. You can even use it to control other Elgato products like the Keylight Air, which we are doing so here. You can adjust brightness, color tone, on off, etc. And it can control multiple key lights, so that's awesome. The design is simple. It's basically an LCD screen arranged behind a bunch of membrane buttons, which are obviously not mechanical because that would obstruct the screen. But this is the big advantage because it not only allows you to change what each button does, but you can change what each button looks like because of that customizable screen. Resolution is decent. It's nothing. It's not a 4K screen jam behind it, but then again, the price would skyrocket and there's very little value in that. I found that the clarity and, and brightness is more than enough and you can even customize the brightness in the Elgato Stream Deck software. Speaking of the software, this is where the Stream Deck really shines, especially when you compare it to other competitors' versions. The Stream Deck software allows you to change profiles based on what program you have open, so we can show you by doing that now. So if I click the settings here on the top, and I go to my Adobe Premiere profile, you can have it where you select which uh, program will kick this profile off. And you can clone profiles and make it so a lot of the buttons are the same, but they launch with different applications being open. So I love that feature. Another nice thing is I upgraded from a standard Stream Deck and I use the XL primarily now. And I was able to select all of my profiles. If I go to the profiles um, page and then right click, you can hit backup all and I can back up the entire Stream Deck profile setup I have on my computer. Then, when I upgrade to the XL, I can right-click again and import once this device is on. And basically, it says restore from backup. I can clone all those profiles that were set on my old Stream Deck. And now my XL picks up where I left off, allowing me to save a lot of time when I upgrade hardware. So I thought that was a nice little touch that they did. Um, because I think once you realize how good this is, you'll end up wanting to upgrade or add a second one down the road too. They're just so powerful. So anyway, with that being said, once we've selected the profile we want, this is how easy it is. I can drag and drop. Uh, if I drag into something that exists already, it will automatically create a folder. I can right click on each icon and then you can hit move to folder or move to multi-action, which is really clever. It's basically allowing you to basically create your own macros through custom buttons. If you've created a folder, you'll see one like I have one that says web and apps. I can double click it and as I'm clicking it, it changes instantly on the Stream Deck Excel. So everything that you're doing is previewable in real time. I don't have to uh, guess what it will look like. And it really makes the customization process so easy. You can browse, you can add. If I hit more actions, there's basically, um, I don't wanna say like a store, but they have their own little web page that pops up where you can add and remove uh, different tools, whether it be for custom hardware that you have, uh, different programs. They have crypto tickers, stock trackers, Philips Hue, Light Control, Google Play. There's just so many different things that either Elgato or other developers have released for it. So the functionality keeps improving literally monthly. I mean, if you just wait a month or two and check again, it's likely you'll see something else. They added the NVIDIA Shadow Play, which is really cool. Um, it's just, it really simplifies things that whether you're a gamer a programmer, a content creator, you can do so much with this. You know, when I switch to my Adobe Premiere one, this is just an example, I have some really quick shortcuts for customizing my timeline, uh, scrubbing scenes, changing my power profiles for rendering versus noise. In case I need to do a voiceover, I can quiet down the computer. There's just so many cool things you can do with this. And honestly, I, I wanted to showcase this stuff more because it's obvious that it's a Stream Deck controller. You can use it to do live streams. But what a lot of people don't know is just how powerful this thing can be when you customize it to do other things. And as you can see here, I have Twitch open and that was partly because it's not just a scene selector for your streams. You can customize your chat to do slow chat, subs only. You can play an ad. You can automatically post messages to Twitter. 
Um, YouTube is naturally more limited because Google and YouTube, let's face it, they're not the most friendly when it comes to uh, live streaming stuff. Um, but then it'll control other things from Elgato. I already talked about the control center. This is what you use to control your key lights and your key light air. They naturally have new tools for the new microphones that they have, the Wave, um, to customize those. I don't have one of these yet, so I can't use that. But there's, again, a lot, a lot of different things. And I wanted to show you, we're going to scroll up a little bit here. So if I do hotkey and click it, I could label it as GT test. I can then click the software or the text icon. I can change the color of it if I want it to really stand out. Um, so there we go. I can double click the picture and make the picture whatever I want. Um, so we have some funny ones here, but let's just click this because it's plain. Now this looks terrible. Naturally, you wouldn't do that, but I, I just want to show you how fast it is. Hotkey to assign. I can set this to be whatever I want. And now every time I press that button, that hotkey gets implemented, which means it works with any program. Any program that supports a hotkey, you can label it and perform it as such. So another nice thing is when you turn these on and off, you can actually see the buttons interacting. So if you are worried about um, the feedback to know whether you press something or not, it's very easy to see the difference in what's happening. I can turn the microphone on and off, etc. So that is incredibly powerful. It does a lot more than you think. So if you're looking for functionality beyond a stream controller, um, this is again where it shines. It doesn't matter what you have. If a keyboard or a mouse can do it, the Stream Deck can too. And then you get the functionality of these extra tools and capabilities that it can do. Now, when you're not using it, you can set it to have a screensaver. So if I go to general, you can have the Stream Deck sleep after five minutes all the way up to two hours. You can change the brightness of the Stream Deck if it's too bright or too dark. And then the other nice thing you can do is uh, if you want like its own screensaver, this is kind of a geeky thing, but I have a couple uh, matrix style screensavers. So if you want to keep your desktop set up looking at a 10, level 10, just put a matrix screensaver on it. There's some cool things. This is just an idea. Uh, if you're a geek like me, it's nice seeing it do something rather than be static. So. We enabled that and naturally you can preview it on the software and you'll see it on the Stream Deck itself. Because this is a larger screen, it uses a USB 3 interface. Uh, this one actually has a USB-C connector on it, which is uh, um, unlike the regular Stream Deck, which has an embedded cable, you cannot remove it. And that one can run on USB 2.0. So most new uh, computers have USB 3.0, so you'll be okay there. I do like the way the mount mechanism works on the uh, XL. Basically you have this detachable base and it's magnetic, so you can pop it off and lay it flat if you like, and the cable goes through here. You can run the cable through the center of the base if you want, but when you want to have it at a more steep angle, you can just snap it right back onto the base. Now when it's off, you can obviously see there's a little bit of glare from the keys. They're glossy, even though the material is flat black, the buttons themselves are a little reflective. In most situations, it's not an issue, especially when it's on. And when you plug it back in, the boot up is instantaneous. You'll see the Elgato logo, but then the buttons are there, and you can control things like the key light air immediately without any weight. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is the Stream Deck XL, or Stream Deck in a nutshell. It is a ridiculously good product. I was not sent this for review. I purchased this uh, almost a year ago is when I purchased the first Stream Deck. I upgraded to an XL uh, just a few months later because I liked it so much and I've been using it ever since. So unfortunately I'm just doing the review now because I, I just thought of this as such an essential product to my production work for things like Adobe uh, live streaming etc that it was I wasn't treating it like a normal product. I was just it's part of my workflow but it's so good and it can you be used in so many different ways as you saw it's worth mentioning and it's worth investing in if you have the budget or the means to justify using something like this. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. If you have any questions, please shoot me a comment below. I'm always happy to answer them for you. Do not forget to subscribe because we have a ridiculous amount of reviews on the horizon. This is kind of a great segue as we uh, keep covering new gaming headsets. Next gen consoles are coming out, so naturally we have a lot of new stuff between that. Keyboards, audio equipment, whatever it is. So. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see all that good stuff. I will put on uh, affiliate links in the description below, which admittedly, this is very hard to find right now because of the whole coronavirus thing and supply going down and demand going up because everyone's working at home. But I will put the affiliate links there. It won't save you any money from buying it through Amazon, but it will support the channel to a small degree um, in case you found this helpful. But purchase this wherever you can find it. Get a good deal. Don't pay more than retail. 
And if you have any questions, again, let me know below. Thank you guys so much for sticking around, and I will see you next time.